Hey guys, this is what we're making today. So it is a ladybug nightlight. And I have one of these electronic lights in there. And we're just going to move him aside and get started. So I'm using my B-Mix clay um, just because it's a small build. <clears throat> if I was going to build something larger, I would probably... Um, use my beam, uh, my lens blend, which has a little rod in it. Okay. All right. So I'm going to start with just a little square of clay. And we're just going to roll it out. And really, the only tools you need for this today is a needle tool and a scoring tool, and then some kind of rib-like tool that's small that you can use to smooth your clay. One of these. And if you like to, you can get, um, you can put on your phone uh, a Google image of a ladybug to kind of reference as you're going. I did that yesterday when I was making the prototype. Okay. So that's about as big as I want it to get. And I'm just going to use my needle tool and I'm going to cut out the shape of a ladybug. And I didn't get that side quite as big as I'd like it to be. And there's my text message that I did not put on vibrate. Okay, so I didn't make it quite wide enough on one side, so I'm just going to kind of pull on that side a little bit. And I don't quite like the shape of the head, so I'm going to adjust this little pin right here a little bit. I just got a chance to see April. She came out and picked up a bag of clay. So that was great. Okay, this is how we're going to start. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and score here with my little handy dandy scoring tool. And I'm going to add just a little bit of water. Okay. Then I'm just going to start to roll out the coils. And you can see they're not completely the same all the way across. They're almost the same. Um, if you'd like to roll yours out on the table, you can do that. This is just faster for me. And I rarely have table space next to me that doesn't have something on it. Okay, so I'm going to get started. And you can start wherever you want. I generally start right at the top. And I'm just pressing and slightly rolling the coil as I go around. And y'all saw this when I did the hand building, I think, was it the last time we were there? No? Maybe the second to the last? No, I think it was the last time. Um, so I'm just going to start to join this seam right here. Now don't be mean to be sticking my middle finger at you. <laughs> I just usually use that finger. <laughs> so. I don't usually do videos, so anyway, y'all are going to have to bear with me on these videos. And then I'm going to add a snake over that seam, just to kind of cement that. Now this is such a small little piece, <clears throat> excuse me, I don't think I'll have, I would have trouble with it coming apart, but I'm just going to do it just for safety's sake. Good. Now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to join. Now this is a piece that we're not really going to see the inside. But if you would like to smooth it and make it look really super nice, you can. Um, if, you, if you don't want to worry about fussing with that, you don't have to. Because you're really not going to see very much of the inside of this. 
And I'm just pulling this up now. Okay. I hope y'all are having a beautiful day. It's almost 80 degrees already. And out here at the farm, it is just absolutely beautiful with the trees blooming. And spring is so beautiful and wonderful. Okay, so I'm just going to take that off the bat so it doesn't stick. If you like to, you can actually just turn your bat over since, you know, there was a little wet spot on my bat from where I started. Okay, and I'm just going to leave it like that. Now, um, this is where I'm going to take my tool that I like to use, my dental tool that I showed y'all. Now, again, if you have this tool or a tool like this, you can use something like this. There's also something like this you could use. Any, any tool that's going to allow you to spread the clay, you can use. And so what I would do now is I would just go back here. I'm going to try to do this so y'all can see it. So I'm just going to smooth those two, two pieces together. Okay? And when you get around to the head, it gets a little dicey. So that's when I sometimes I'll pick up this little tool and I'll use this instead because it's a smaller piece and it just helps get in those tiny corners right there. And then we'll go back to this tool. Okay. And don't worry about how this edge looks right now. We're going to fix that later, but as for right now, let's just keep building. So I'm going to keep going up. I'm just pinching this. Out. I'm rolling a little bit, but it's not that much. If that confuses you, the rolling, you don't actually have to do that. Um, as you pinch, you can just pinch it on. I just find that I, if I roll it on, it, it's just, it just tends to stick better. It's just for me. Um, you may not find that. Okay, so now um, I'm going to put a support system in here for this, this little area right here because I don't want this area to pull. I'd like for it to stay in and make a nice shape. So I'm just going to stick a little wall right here. And this is something that I do a lot in building animals. Um, is produce a support for certain walls where I feel like they may have stress and I feel like this area would probably have a little bit of stress so I'm going to put a little wall in there to keep it together and in the shape that I want it to be in okay so there's that now I pushed it down pretty well but you can go ahead and connect those seams like to. I think mine would have stuck without me doing this, but there we go. Now, what we want to do right now is don't forget um, to put a vent hole in here because this is going to be a closed space and this is going to, you want to have a vent for this closed space so it doesn't blow and you can use whatever tool you want to. Just poke a little hole in there like that. Perfect. And we'll just continue building. So I'm going to go around using that wall, that support wall. So I'm just going to start here. And again, if you're looking at your Google image, I'm not right now, but I did look yesterday a lot. Excuse me, I have allergies. Um, the rear end of the ladybug, it kind of comes out like that. So I'm going to I'm going to try to mimic that shape. And it can be as realistic or as cartoony as you would like. I feel like mine yesterday was a little cartoony, um, but I like him. He's cute. Okay, and again, I'm going to go ahead and try to stop here and join these walls. Now, you can join by smearing down or smearing up whichever way you feel like it's the best works the best for you I tend to smear up unless I have a coil that sits out and then I have to smear that down that will make a lot of sense to you as you do this and again I'm smearing down here but up here As 
it's easier for me to sit down and do this. Sometimes when you have to look underneath your piece, so I'm just going to do it real quick because I don't want to waste y'all's time. I don't want this video to be too long. And then I just go back and kind of smooth it down a little bit like that. I'm not going to smooth the inside because nobody's going to see it and it's just a waste of time for me. But some people like to do that just in case the coils might try to come apart. Um, I think with, if your clay is wet enough, um, you won't have that problem. Okay, time to go around one more time. And this is where we talked about in class. So this is where we're going to start to move the shell of the bug is going to move inwards. So we're going to go inside the piece and add inside the piece, right? So that it starts to curve over like a, the shell of the ladybug, okay? Now, <clears throat> we still want the back end to come back a little bit more. I do. And so once I get over to this, uh, to the rear end, I'm going to pull this coil out on the back like that. So when you want to go in, you coil in. Sorry about that, my battery ran out. Okay, so as I was saying, if you want to come in, you put the coil on the inside, and if you want to, your piece to move outward, you put the coil on the inside, on the outside, sorry. So I'm going to go back in here as the shell is curving in. And anytime you want to stop and just go ahead and join these coils, you can. And like I said, we're going to clean all of this up. So it doesn't have to be precise at the moment. We're just trying to get these things joined together. And then generally, I'll go back after that and just do a little scraping with my tool just to get rid of some of that extra clay that comes off when you do join these coils together. Okay, I'm going to stop on the shell here and take a look at my ladybug shape. And I'm probably going to put some darts in here, but I'm going to go ahead and finish the ladybug's head first. So I'm just going to join here like that. Okay. And then I'm just going to curve across because their head is kind of you look at a picture, you'll see that their head is kind of rounded at the top. And you can just put your hand behind here like that. And if the shape alters, you can always alter it back after you finish joining the coil. So I'm going to pull this up and squish that in a little bit there. That's my point. And then I'm just going to go across here. So I'm just laying these across. See, this is building with coils, it allows for you to do really fast building, but also it allows you to go, I don't know how to say it, in such a way that you can build in all directions, which that's not the case with pinch pots or pinch building and um, slab building. Slabs will do a lot for you, but they tend to be persnickety if they get big. And I build a lot of big things, and so I like to use the coils. But slab building is fun as well. And I'm just going across here like that. Perfect. I don't know if y'all can hear it, but the church bells from the church across the street are starting to ring. They ring every every day about this time. Makes me feel hopeful. Okay, notice how this is sticking out a little bit, and I'm not, I'm not, not really excited about that. So I'm gonna take a little dart here. Okay, so I'm dart this, like that. just a little dart, and then I'm just gonna join those by overlapping.
you guys, but I've been working on illustrating a children's book since all this started. Well, not that long, but I've been working on this book for about a year, and uh, it's been fun. But I'm excited to do a little clay today. I've missed it. And then at the end, when you have a hole about like this, I just make a little pancake and stick it on like that. And then if you can't get back in there, you're going to try with it because I just tried. But you're just going to pull. And the funny thing is, guys, it's, well, it's not funny, but um, I had just bought all of you a tool like this. And I had, it came the day after we had our last class. So don't go buy one because I have one for you when we finally get back together. Lift him up like that and just get that all smoothed out. Okay, and I know he looks rough, but um, we'll get him all cleaned up. Okay, and then I'm going to take a couple darts in the back. Excuse me, it's getting hot in here. Uh, it's getting warm outside. Okay, so I'm going to take a couple darts here, I think. Um, maybe here. Because I want the shell, if you'll look at your ladybug, I want the shell to, to come in a little bit more here, like that. That's better. I think that's better. Okay, and I'm just going to smooth that dart on the inside and on the outside. I think that's, that's enough for right now. Okay. So I'm going to make another snake and start to come up. Now, this clay is pretty wet, and it's going to be very loose when I start to manipulate it. Okay, I'm going to start coming in now, because I want his back to come in. Um, normally, if I was just working, I would set this aside, maybe in front of a fan, before I started putting all the holes in it, but since y'all are... Um, Want to see this all? I want to do this all at once for y'all. So, when you're working on your ladybug, when you get to this point, you can even set it aside and put it in front of a fan to let it stiffen up a little bit. It'll be easier for you to work on. Um, and then, uh, so maybe start two at the same time. So you can put one aside and then start the other one and swap back and forth. That's generally what I do when I build because. A lot of times when I'm building bigger things, they don't want to stand up for me. I'm just smoothing this. And like I said, it's not going to look perfect right now. But we'll clean it up later. going to make this go really fast now because we're coming back in. Now you can decide at this point, like, do you want to put feet on there? I decide generally with insects that I don't put feet on there because they pop off and it's really easy to break them off the piece. And, you know, a lot of times when you see a ladybug, you don't see their feet. Um, you don't see their legs. So I just kind of I kind of leave them off. Now, if you're firing for yourself and you want feet, go ahead and put them on. Um, but be careful if you're firing at Art Alliance because um, sometimes, you know, it's so easy for anybody to pop a foot off. Um, it really wouldn't be the, the fault of the kiln loader because um, it's just, I mean, I, I, I fire my own pieces and with stuff like that, I tend to pop my own stuff off. It's hard to set something down on the kiln shelf with little legs sticking out like that and not move or shift. And, you know, when you're putting it down flat on the kiln shelf, it's really easy to just shift with breath and pop those things off. So, just a little warning there. Well, he's a little, um, I'm not real sure. I think I'm going to take a couple darts here. Okay. And 
I did smooth inside. Take a little dart here, just a little one. Smoothing on the inside. Okay. Now I start a little better. Okay. Now I'm going to take a dart here. Now, a lot of times, I'll take all these little balls of clay that I pull off of this tool as I'm scraping, and I put them in a little container. And all those little balls are what I use to make things rattle. So I'll put them inside of an enclosed space. Most of my sculpture animals rattle. People really like that, um, and I love it. I love I love something that rattles. So. Um, there's a use for all those little pieces of clay that you pull off your tool as you're smoothing. And speaking of that, while I'm thinking about it, there's a way to make this little guy rattle because we do have an enclosed space. So a lot of times I'll forget to make something rattle and then at the end I'll remember that I forgot. And I'll just take a couple little pieces and stick them in there. But these are dry. These pieces of clay I'm putting in here are dry. If you put wet pieces in there, they'll stick, and they sometimes they'll rattle, and sometimes they won't. So it's a 50-50 shot. But if you put dry ones in there, they won't stick. And the best ones, if there's people out there that do porcelain, the best sounding rattle um, beads are porcelain. They make a great sound. You don't have to be building with porcelain. But if you can make some porcelain beads for the things that you build. And I am going to close that hole up. I just want it to set up just a little bit more. I don't want to squish his head when I put that piece back on. Okay, now again I'm going to make a little pancake here. Like that. And what I tend to do is I like to make the edges of the pancake really, really, really thin. That will help you spread it without squishing it in. So I'm just gently pushing this clay to the sides. Okay. And sometimes I'll squish. Um, right now this is a closed form. So if I did squish, I could blow it back up. And I know y'all have seen Curry do that. Um, and there's a little squish in there that I don't like, but I'm, I'm going to take care of it in a minute. Okay. So now I'm just going around and just kind of smoothing the clay. And the head needs quite a bit of work. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and fill in this hole. Now, when I fill in a hole, I'm going to make a cone-shaped piece like that. It's a little too much, right? Like this. And then I'm going to flatten it. Okay, like that. And you stick it in there like that, right? And then you've got this larger area to smooth down. Okay, now he's all taken care of pretty much. Okay, now. And I'm just smoothing now, uh, but I'm not going to do too much more of this because I want to show y'all the finished product. and. I don't, number one, I don't want my batteries to run out again, but number two, I just want y'all to have more time to play, not be in front of a video camera. Okay, so if you see this right here, I don't like where that is indenting in, so I'm going to just pick a little pancake and push that over. Now, another trick is we're going to cut holes in this guy because he's a nightlight, right? So, if you have an area like that that you don't like, the best idea is to cut a hole right next to it. Right? I mean, if it's small enough that you can cut out, you could cut, cut it out. But I just want to show you this trick. I could have cut that out. But it's also right in the middle, and I don't want the hole, I don't want a hole right in the middle. I, I like to 
Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm going to stick my finger in here for support, and that way I can really smooth out this area that I don't like. Like that. Okay, now, does that make sense? Okay, your fingers are probably going to have pushed this out a little bit, so you can just pull that back out. And then you can just decide where you want your holes. Um, I kind of just do it very spontaneously. Try to grab that piece, even though we're going to cut a hole in the bottom for the candle. Okay. And I, you know, I thought a, a, about a lot of different ways to make this um, this nightlight. But the reason I did it this way is number one, it's the simplest. And number two, I figure because Sunny's using it in her child, child's room that she would use one of those candles. Um, and not a real candle, and so I feel like it would be pretty easy just to s stick that little guy right in a hole. It'd just be the easiest way to make it. And I wanted y'all to have something sort of fast and fun and not something you'd have to fuss with. There was the other way I was thinking about making it, it was, was going to be pretty fussy. And it's easier, a lot of times if you want a candle, um, a real candle holder, or a nightlight candle holder, you're going to want to throw that piece because trying to join hand-built pieces um, are a little bit more difficult than when I showed you the the, co the covered um, the little covered pieces. It's easier on a wheel for me anyway to do that. So, so I'm just doing that. And you can kind of just look and see whether you want. I'm going to put a hole right here. Okay. I'm just smoothing this out. All the smoothing you can do when it stiffens up quite a bit. Okay, so now I'm going to make his face. I'm just going to smooth him out a little bit. Now if you'll look at your Google image, um, let me take a drink of water. Um, you'll notice that they have a kind of a pincher teeth like thing in the front. You can put that in if you want to. It kind of looks not um, very sweet. So if you just want to make a smile on your ladybug, you can. Especially if this is going in a children's room, you kind of want it to look sweet. Um, so I'm just taking two little balls here and I'm going to make some pancakes and these will be the eyes. And you can kind of smooth those in if you want to. If, if you get them, if your clay is wet enough, they'll stick without scoring. Um, I tend just to smooth and join a little bit here, but try not to take the round shape away. Okay. And in doing that, I kind of squished his head a little bit, so I'm just going to pop his head back up like that. Okay. So, and they've got those two little antenna in the front. And I think if the antenna, if it's up here and not close to the, the kiln shelf, it's easier to keep these intact. So that's why I put the antenna on and not the feet. I'm just going to stick those on like that. And then on this one, I put the pincher on my last one. But on this one, I'm just going to put a little smile on this little guy's face. I'll make him a, a, a little cartoon or cartoon. Just make him look more like a, a character. You can put little eyeballs in like this. Okay. And then they also have little dots on their head, so you can either make those with clay or you can. I'm going to carve the one I made yesterday. It wasn't dry enough for me to carve, but it was. Um, I did put slip on it already, so I'm going to carve it. Um, and I'll, I'll put a picture out on the phone when I'm finished so you can see it. So that's about it. And so now, in the end, and I would, this is when I would let it stiffen up, but I'm going to go ahead and do it. I'm going to find my candle. Hold on one second. Okay, here's my little, can, my little battery candle. And I'm going to kind of look at the size of it, and I'm going to cut the hole in the bottom where it's bigger than this so I can just slip it right over.
Okay, so I wouldn't recommend that you do this right now because this is, I'm having to hold this very gently, um, not to squish the back end, and I can feel it giving in my hand. Um, so I'm going to cut this hole. And you can, I'm going to clean this up later. I don't want to stress this, the back of this thing. But then you can just look through one of your holes and just set it down. And there he is. The ladybug night light. I'll turn off the light so you can see him. There he is. Alright guys, have a great day. I hope you really do.